Hi. Now, what I want to show you in this particular video is how we can use stationary points in practical applications. And what I've got here to demonstrate this is a fairly typical question that you're likely to see. We've got an open box and we're told that its surface area is 486 centimeters squares. And we're given that the length is twice the width. And what we've got to do is find the maximum volume and go on to show that the volume is a maximum. Now, when you get questions like this, quite often you don't have a sketch. So I would suggest that you draw your sketch of an open box. And you can see it's open because what I've got is I've just put these lines here so you can see inside the box. Let's label this diagram. We're told that its length is twice the width. So if we take the width, let's say we call it x, okay, x centimeters, then the length here is going to be 2x. Now the volume v, let's define that, okay, let's just say volume v, is going to be equal to the area of the base, which will be 2x times x, that's 2x squared, multiplied by the height. Now we were given that the length was related to the width, it was double the width. But we're given nothing about the height of the box in relation to, say, the width. So we're just going to have to define this by another letter. So let's just say we call it h. So v equals 2x squared h. And you'll quite often find that you have to do this in problems like this. Start to substitute some variables into your problem. So where are we going with this? Well, what's happening is that I'm going to be looking at connecting v to some other variable. And at the moment, I've got a problem because the volume v is connected to two variables, x and h. As we vary x, the height will also change so as we always retain this constant area. So I want to try and get an equation with v against one other variable. And we're going to choose x, OK? Now, that's going to mean that there's going to be some graph then relating v to x. Now, I don't know what that graph looks like, but let's just sketch something in, say something like this. Now, we're looking for the maximum volume, which will be at this point here. And this point here is a stationary point. And it will be where dv by dx equals zero, because our gradient there will be zero. So at that point there, dv by dx will equal zero. And that's what we're trying to establish. We need to get an equation then with v in terms of x, just the one variable. So how do we do that? Well, we turn now to what is given here, the area. We're told the area is a constant value of 486 centimeters squares. So if I just write this in here, we'll just put the area equals 486 centimeters squares. So therefore, we can create an equation from this that relates this surface area to the 486. Because 486 will be equal to the area of the base plus the area of the sides. Well, the area of the base is going to be 2x times x. So that's 2x squared. Now we've got this area here which is xh, and there's another one on the, this side over here. So we've got to add to this 2xh. And also we've got this side here, which has an area of 2x times h, that's 2xh, and we've got it over here. So if we add those two together, that's the total of 4xh. And if we simplify this now, we've got therefore 486 equals 2x squared, plus a total of 6xh. 
Now I can see that I could simplify this further just by dividing through by 2. 2 is a factor of each of these three terms. So if I divide through by 2, you're going to get 243 equals x squared plus 3xh. OK, now we should be able to make h the subject from this. Express h in terms of x. So if I was to subtract x squared from both sides, we'd have 3xh equals 243 minus x squared. And then I would divide by 3x to both sides. So I would end up with, therefore, h equaling 243 minus x squared, all divided by 3x. And what I can do now is take this equation and substitute it back into this equation here. So if I just call this equation 1, and we'll call this one equation 2, so all I need to do now is sub equation 2 into equation 1. And if we do that, then the volume V, we'll just leave it as V, we've got therefore V equals 2x squared multiplied by h here. So that's 243 minus x squared divided by 3x. And what we'll do is we'll put that in brackets like so. OK? Now I can tidy this up because I notice that I can divide top and bottom here by x. So that goes into that once and that will just take out that squared there, leaving us with 2x. And what I'm going to do next is just expand this bracket. So we therefore have that v equals 2x times 243 over 3. So that's going to leave me with 486x over 3. And then 2x times minus x squared over 3. Well, that's going to give me minus 2 thirds x cubed. OK, so we've got that. I also can divide that 3 into 486, actually. So therefore, we've got v equals 162x minus 2 thirds x cubed. So I've got v now in terms of x. So I've got some graph out there, OK, for this function here. And I can now differentiate it to establish this stationary point where it's going to be. So if we differentiate this in the usual way, we've got therefore dv by dx equals, and if we differentiate 162x, that's going to be just 162. And differentiating 2 thirds x cubed, we'll get 3 times 2 thirds, which is 2. Reduce the power by 1, so you've got 2x squared, minus 2x squared then. Now, at stationary points then, we'll just put this down here, at stationary points, I'll just abbreviate this, OK? At stationary points, we know that dv by dx equals 0. So what that's going to mean is that, therefore, this equals 0, that's 162 minus 2x squared equals 0. And if I rearrange this, make 2x squared the subject, 2x squared would equal 162. Divide both sides by 2, and I can see that therefore x squared would equal 81. Now carrying on from here, if we've got x squared equaling 81, if we take the square root of both sides, x will equal plus or minus 9. But this is a practical problem. This length here can't be a negative value. So since x is greater than 0, I'll just say, but x is greater than 0, then therefore x must be equal to 9. So when it comes to the dimensions of the box, we can see that the width here, x, we'll call it w there, is going to be 
nine centimeters and the length is double the width so the length will be equal to 18 centimeters and as for the height h well I've got to substitute x equals 9 into equation 2 here and if I do that you should find that you get that h turns out to be 6 centimeters okay so now we've got the dimensions it's very easy just to get the volume so the volume okay volume v is going to equal 9 times 18 times 6 9 by 18 by 6 or you could have just simply substituted x equals 9 into this equation here for the volume it would have given you the same answer and that answer is 972 972 centimeter cubes okay so that's our volume and we've got to now show that it would have been a maximum volume so this is where we need to look at the nature of our stationary point okay so we'll just put down here a little intro nature of stationary point and we've got several options for doing this okay what we could do is a gradient method by building up a table or we could do the second differential method I'll do both methods so you can see how it's done if we do the gradient method from a table we take our point that we're looking at x and we see that x has a stationary point at 9 so I need to take a point either side of 9 and we'll have 8 and then we'll have 9 and then we'll go for 10 okay and we're looking now at the gradient dv by dx and trying to see what kind of sign we get now if you substitute 8 into this equation here dv dx you'll find you get 162 minus 2 times 8 squared so that's 162 minus 2 times 64 it leaves you with 34 a positive value so that's positive and that means that the gradient is sloping upwards like this we know that when x is 9 dv dx turns out to be 0 so that's going to be our flat point there on the graph and when x is 10 if we substitute that into here we've got 2 times 10 squared that's going to be 200 162 minus 200 is going to be a negative value so we've got the slope of the graph going downwards so you can see that by this method we've got a maximum remember the alternative method is the second differential method so we'll just do that one here okay and for that we need to differentiate dv by dx with respect to x again so therefore we would have d2v by dx squared and if we differentiate that that's zero this comes out as minus 4x and what we do is we substitute our value that we're testing and that is when x equals 9 into this equation and we find that therefore d2v by dx squared is going to be minus 4 times 9 which is going to be minus 36 a negative number value less than zero and we found that when we had our second differential which was a negative value it was a maximum so by either method the volume v is going to be a maximum so we we'll just say here that the volume is a max okay or maximum now it's interesting just to point out that this sketch here was not necessarily this particular sketch of the graph in fact if you did draw this graph it doesn't really look like this at all what we have 
is a negative x cubed graph and when x is naught v is naught so you've got a graph looking like this it comes through the origin goes up to our maximum and then drops away like this okay so we were interested at this point here which had the x value of 9. okay well even though this is just a start on this concept I hope at least it's given you some idea of how then we can apply stationary values to practical applications.